teaching in the time of uh, teaching in the time of COVID-19, the classroom experience organized by the Institute for the Promotion of Teaching Science and Technology. My name is Itipong Lokutalapon. I will be your host for this morning event. Today, we are honored to have teachers from the Philippines, Indonesia, and Thailand, three countries, to, to share what they have done and learned from the, hard from the hard time that we have faced together in three topics. And there, are, the first one is how to teach science, mathematics, and technology to encourage creative and innovative skill from Thailand. The second one is online learning barriers, common misconceptions about e-learning from the Philippines. And the last one, uh, lab from home, a new format for physics laboratory instruction for secondary school during COVID-19 pandemic from Indonesia. For today's seminar, if you have any question, please feel free to leave them in the chat box anytime. And before we begin the session, may I invite Dr. Wallawalong Lakrundet, Vice President of IPST, to deliver his welcoming words. Dr. Wallawalong, please. Thank you, Mr. Tipong. Um, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Institute for the Promotion of Teaching Science and Technology, or IPST, I would like to welcome you all to the online international seminar from IPST. It is a pleasure for me once again to extend all the participants my warmest greetings. I would like to thank the speakers for taking your time to be with us today for educators, the educational personnel. Learning from the actual teaching experience is very important, especially in the difficult time of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic everything changed. We are moving toward the new normal education. Fortunately, today we'll get to learn various perspectives and the context and share ideas with teachers from the three Southeast Asian countries of the impressive diversity in culture, society, and education, including the Philippines, Indonesia, and Thailand. I myself are very excited about these uh, opportunities to really hear from the varied perspective from our friends, you know, from Indonesia. Um, Mr. Sayati Siyansya is very highly recommended by C. Kim at, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the physics teacher myself, and I'm really looking forward to what you do in the physics uh, laboratory, which is very important for that the students can come and really have the hands-on experience learning about the measurements. I think, I think this is the heart of the physics, and it's really hard to get through that through the COVID pandemic situation. Um, Joanne, Kalopi is, is one of the really good friends, you know, that are working with GLOBE program in Thailand and is a long time friend, you know, and she's basically, uh, I, I, I know her uh, from her dedication to really, you know, helping students in, in learning science and in the environment. So we, we really looking forward to see that. And of course, you know, from, from Thailand, um, the folks from Dara Vitiali, um, Dara Academy, is actually uh, one of the top uh, teachers that are represent you know Thailand you know so many times and basically they are quite a really good friend with us especially at a PST right here so I'm, I really believe that the representatives uh, will do really really good and give you a very insight on how to uh, adjust how, how to make change into a new situation like this they may not speak for all the teachers in their countries, but instead you see the lessons, the practice that they have gone through their experience. So, you know, from their observation, from the actual classroom, this is something that we're really looking forward to, you know, for us so that, you know, we can make some, you know, um, take something and apply to our situation as well. I, I believe you all uh, are right here to learn and to really, get something that can be a good practice that you can apply to your classroom and 
what we do right here is basically try to make sure that our our, our next generation is ready to um, you know learn science, learn about the technology using mathematics, and basically make the good out of it. You know, right there. So I hope that this is going to be a one of the great seminar that gonna have. You know, um, IPSC organizes. This is maybe like the probably the the fifth times already that we are doing the international seminar. Um, thanks to COVID nineteen situation that it forced us to really adjust and to be able to you know stay right here. You know, with the friends from Indonesia, from Malaysia, from the Philippines. Um, just the online and basically we can get close together and to share the ideas. I think this is the great things that we learned from the COVID-19 pandemic. So at last, I wish you all a very fruitful and productive seminar. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the last session of today's seminar. Uh, may I introduce uh, the speaker, uh, the presenter from the Binus School, Bekasi, Indonesia, Mr. Sakpi P. Siyan Ya. Okay, 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 Sakpi, please. Good morning, everyone. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Can you see my screen, sir? Yes. How about now? Yes, sure, yes. sure. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, my fellow teachers. Uh, a pleasant day to each and everyone, to Vice President, Mr. Boa Rong, and the Specialist International Affair of the Institute for the Promotion of Teaching Science and Technology, IPST, Mr. Itipong, and Ms. Nanyarat, Ms. Lalida, my deepest gratitude for inviting me to be part and share with all of you my classroom experience lab, lab from home a new format of physics laboratory instruction for secondary school during this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, <clears throat> from my humble experience, of course, as a science teacher in this year's teaching in the time of COVID-19, dearest participant, a fellow educator from Southeast countries, thank you for your presence. And then it is my deepest desire and joy that we will uh, all gain insight from this event and apply this as we continue to be agent of positive transformation, of course, yeah, for the all of community we serve. Okay, my name is Shakti Perdana Sariansa. I'm a physics teacher from Binus School, Bekasi. Here is my brief introduction. And then, yes, this is the online etiquette and decorum, uh, especially this is the 
uh, the way that I that we usually use in our school, Bino School Bekasi, online attic and decorum. Please mic on mute unless speaking. Personal audio camera on. Question, reaction, and emojis welcome. Yeah, this is what we as a teacher want the students do during our class. So that as a teacher, I want you all here to uh, to be an example, good role model. Yeah, we are a teacher. Please. Uh, we can uh, follow this online etiquette and decorum. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I will start my uh, sharing with one quote from uh, the father of Indonesian education, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ki Hajar Dewan Toro. As a teacher in the front, we give an example. As a teacher in the middle, we encourage the students. As a teacher in the back, we give them power. Yeah. This is a uh, father of Indonesian education. Now, let me uh, explain the introduction, the background of uh, lab from home. As we know that laboratories are essential component of science course, of course, uh, experimentation provides students with real world context to apply scientific concept, develop critical thinking skill and engage in scientific uh, process, yeah. thinking skill ability and uh, process, scientific process skills. We know we are struggling to prevent students having learning loss during this pandemic, but not only in cognitive, but also in practical skill. Okay, not only in cognitive, but also practical skills. This is what I want to share with you all uh, teachers in this occasion, how we give them laboratory experiences from their home to practice their scientific process skill, either basic pro science process skill or integrated science process skill. Students do not only watch the uh, do not only watch the teachers demonstrate the experiment in front of the camera, but they also doing it. As we know, students cannot access the laboratory equipment yeah, uh, during this pandemic. And we know really well some physics laboratory or maybe chemistry, biology, science laboratory equipment are factory made tool, such as in physics, a force meter, in topic mechanic, diffraction grating in physics of wave. We know that uh, all of that is factory made and students, even though us, we cannot access it, okay? So that why uh, we must design an interesting and unique experimental activities by integrating all of the resource like uh, smartphone technology using a cheap material material around us and integrating even the integrating local wisdom if it is possible if possible yeah all the idea that can replace the experiment in the school laboratory which is uh, which are using standard apparatus and then bring the laboratory home so that why we need the, uh, to think creative experiment ideas. And for us as online educator, designing those laboratories can be challenging, of course, right? Can be really challenging during this pandemic, but lab from home uh, can enable students to investigate fundamental concepts from their location using scientific inquiry and preventing not only learning loss in cognitive, but also in scientific uh, process, practical skills. So that why, we design lab from home activities like uh, defining variables, record analyzing data, how to measure the data, interpret the graph, how to draw the graph, and they can do it from their home. Even when we are still in the pandemic situation, for example, home uh, learning from home, or now in Indonesia, we know as limited face to face learning, okay, blended or hybrid learning, we can do it and it open the new opportunities. Okay. I will make sure that we are in the same page first. What is laboratory work? Laboratory works engage students in learning through first-hand experience, interaction with the actual phenomena being studied through simulation or just watching demonstration in front of the camera, right? And in general, Laboratory work can be used to promote the following learning outcomes. For example, attitude towards science, scientific attitude, scientific inquiry, conceptual development, technical skills, and even teamwork skills. And some laboratory exercise, for example, might be uh, employed to verify the concept 
previously discussed in the class, for example, yeah. Or other types of laboratory exercise might be used to develop particular manipulative skills that are needed to subsequent laboratory work. And some others exercise facilitate the attainment of, the attainment of concept. Nah. The desired outcome will dictate the type of laboratory needed. So each type of the laboratory approach has characteristic differentiating it from other approaches. Uh, in general, we uh, most approaches can be classified into one of five categories that you can see in the screen. Okay, scientific process skill laboratory. It depends on what outcome that we want to emphasize during our lesson. And sometimes we can combine at the same at the same time we can combine scientific process skill with the laboratory. Uh, with the problem solving or uh, with the technical skills. So uh, not only uh, limited to uh, one kind of one type of the laboratory, for example, deductive or verification laboratory like that. Nah. This is uh, for the next left from home. Yeah, activities. Why I say this is laboratory instruction everyone laboratory instruction maybe in traditional uh traditionally or maybe in the past we have a perception we think that classroom instruction is uh, and the and the practical skill or laboratory work is two separated things but in current research we combine it as a piece of laboratory instruction in which we design the laboratory activities include in our classroom instruction how to make it like this one uh inquiry inquiry laboratory instruction it is included in the uh inductive okay inductive uh laboratory uh we know that there are some uh types here yeah, about laboratory maybe you ha might have heard about the level of inquiry uh proposed uh, proposed by called the winning in physics or maybe Confirmation inquiry, structure, guided, open inquiry. Okay, it, that, that is the same, almost the same. But we need to know what is the uh, difference between them. In this case, during lab from home, uh, I use, sometimes I use confirmation inquiry. Student confirm a principle for an activity in which the results are known in advance, advance. And sometimes I also structure inquiry. Structure inquiry uh, is different with the guided inquiry. Yeah, uh, structure inquiry student investigate a teacher presented question through a prescribed procedure, while the guided inquiry we uh, we uh, we give them we give them the uh, uh, presented question and then they need to design their own question and their own procedure. Now uh, I adapt from the bell. This is uh, what I do during this lab from home. And then it support it is supported by the the uh, laboratory worksheet. We need to design laboratory worksheet. You, as you can see on the screen, yeah, the laboratory worksheet like it is like a normal worksheet we give to the student when we are not in the pandemic. But it works, okay. But it works uh, as long as we can arrange the instruction really well. But first one presenting a question. We're presenting a question you can see that this is question in this uh, in this worksheet okay what is the separation of wisecom blah 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 and how is the separation maxima affected by or, or what is the relation between the length of the air column with the frequency uh, frequency uh, produced uh, that is the presenting que presented question and then after that formulating hypothesis we i know we are struggling to teach our students how to create, how to formulate hypotheses, right? But in this case, we cannot enforce them to, to be able to creating or formulating the hypothesis directly during this pandemic, even though they are limited face to face. So that why we give them alternative, the option. Uh, based on the prior, you know, based on your prior knowledge, one of the hypotheses choose A, blah, 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 blah. If I increase this, so it will this. In, in, in terms of if blah, 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 then blah, blah, blah. So they will choose. They will choose and they will uh, prove through the experiments whether they choose uh, their, uh, their uh, yeah, their uh, answer is correct. Their hypothesis, choose an hypothesis is correct or not. And then after that, 
this is the prescribed procedure that I, I mean, demonstrating. Demonstrating the procedure. I usually make the procedure column in our in my laboratory worksheet is blank because what? Because I want them to really uh, pay attention what I uh, I'm demonstrating to them. So they can even though this is pres prescribed procedure, yeah. Even though that one, they can uh, start to make uh, a sentence, okay, procedural sentence uh, describing their procedure. And after that, collecting data. This is the uh, this is uh, that distinguishes our our lab from home with other uh, with other experiment. Not only observe something, but they also measure the data, manipulate the, the data, conduct multiple times. Yeah, like they are in school. And how about that? We give them analyzing. Uh, yeah, how to analyze the data and drawing the graph. This is the really, uh, really uh, challenging to make the students uh, draw the graph during this pandemic. Yeah, but we can do it. If we if we do not design this kind of laboratory, they will have yeah learning loss. They will uh, know know about the scientific process at all. Not only demonstrating in front of the camera. Hi guys, this is. Uh, the tube and this one, the tube second, and we, if we mix the liquid and what will happen, it's not only that, but they need to do it. Okay, and after that, making conclusion, of course. Uh, this is uh, the sample of our activity, okay, from the whole activity that I ever, uh, ever give the students, yeah. Before pandemic, for example, the student investigated friction using a force meter. Of course, during pandemic, they cannot access the force meter right at home. But I uh, modified, they need to find out the coefficient of static friction with a pencil and soap, pencil and soap. That is the different, the different experiment, but really challenging only using a soap and a pencil, more conceptual, yes. And the next one, the density, how to measure the density of pebbles, okay? Using a measuring cylinder and triple beam balance. Yeah, they cannot access those apparatus at home, guys. Yeah, so we make them how to be able to measure the density. So I create the activity that measuring the density of instant noodle. Because what? They can easily measure the volume, of course, the, the dimension, the size. How about the mass? They not all uh, not all students have the balance electronic balance at their home, so that why I find the solution that they find the product like instant noodle that already uh, and I get the information about the the net okay in the packaging so they direct inst uh, automatically have uh, the information about the mass they need only to measure the dimension and after that as simple as that. No, if we break if we break the the instant noodle a half, for example, to be two part, we can ask them conceptually. What is the density of these two two parts? Is it the same, less than one another, or greater than another? This is more conceptual. Yeah, those one using using the smartphone sensor, for example, investigating. A magnetic field using uh, iron fillings in the in lab, but I replace it by using the uh, smartphone technology sensor. Yes, and this is the characteristics of the new format physics lab laboratory installation. The first one, the lesson sequences framework integrated with the laboratory activities to produce the associated plans. The second practical skill cover practice, uh, practicing practical skill and scientific process. And simple experiment, but analogous to those the student will have done in laboratory. It, is, it was individually conducted and uh, with the online supervision. Online supervision, as I said, uh, how we demonstrate the prescribed. And the use of equipment, equipment that are commonly available at home, in standard uh, soap, Pencil, okay, and 
uh, yeah, use everyday object, young people are really familiar. Mobile phone, that is very powerful tools. And later on, I will introduce you a simple activity and I want you to uh, join with my next activity. And uh, number seven is the use of local wisdom, if possible. In this case, I use the flute, you know, traditional flute or recorder to measure the speed of the sound. Even though in the school laboratory, we cannot, we never do it. Right? But during this pandemic, I got this idea. Nah, and doing it at home instead of school laboratory, of course. Okay, everyone, I want you now uh, to join how to measure the gravitational acceleration using only a paper, pencil, and smartphone. Please uh, grab your smartphone and grab the paper, a sheet of paper. Yeah, sheet of paper like this. I want you all to grab your sheet of paper. If you have an A4 or F4, in which we know the dimension, the size of the paper, so that why we do not need a ruler to measure the height or the dimension of the paper. Okay. Are you ready with your own paper pencil, everyone? A pencil. Okay, I will deactivate with my virtual background. Yes. Uh, now, the first step is you need to install Pbox application. It is available on iOS and, and or Android, yeah. Pipox application, the orange one, please. While you're installing the Pipox application, I will explain you the concept behind this uh, activity, small activity. I include this activity during my uh, 90 minute instructional time. Okay, if you can see this one, yeah. The concept behind, uh, the concept that I want students to know is about how to measure the gravitational acceleration uh, by using the free fall formula, simple formula, this one. You can see H equals to a half G times T square. Now, how to find G? Of course, if we modify or rearrange the formula, we can two H over T square. What does it mean? Meaning, if we can get the height of the height of the object and we can get the information about the time, the falling time, okay? The, the time that uh, uh, the time required of uh, for the object when it start to fall until it hit the ground we can get the gravitational acceleration okay everyone are you ready did you install the pbox application okay now this or it it also can be used that we can modify the height the height okay as long as we can measure the height. Okay. Okay. And I want you to fill out your result in this uh, in this link. Yeah, wait a minute. Now, this is the example that uh, during the class, the student can collaborate. The whole class can collaborate and can uh, contribute to the result directly. Wait a minute. You may access this link. And you can see. Okay. I can just I stop my sharing screen first and change the screen sharing. Yeah. No, no, no. Share the screen. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, this is this is the spreadsheet. Yeah, the spreadsheet you need to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I just nah. During the class, I I asked the student to yeah to put their name and to measure this own time like this, and after that we can know the gravitational acceleration of the nah. Yeah, if you already installed the Pbox application. Next instruction is open the acoustic timer. Okay, scroll down and then you can see the acoustic stopwatch. Acoustic stopwatch, right? Acoustic stopwatch in your mobile phone. This is the uh, special special uh, application that designs uh, designs by uh, Ger yeah engineer from German Germany yeah uh, 
special for doing experiment in physics. Uh, acoustic timer, acoustic stopwatch. Nah, you can see that how it works. The the acoustic stopwatch work. Yeah, it can activate the timer and deactivate the timer using the sound. Uh, the using uh and tr triggered by by the sound. It means that when you have an environmental noise and it can trigger your mobile phone to start that your acoustic stopwatch to start so that why we need to adjust the threshold you can see the threshold you may adjust the threshold until 0. Point, maybe 0. 0.5 or 0. 0.6 it uh, depends on your uh your room yeah if you are too noisy it means it will be higher because uh until until the application will not be triggered by the environmental around you okay just let me try 0 0.1 okay 0. Point, uh, okay 0. 0.5 and after that press play button when you press play button and the timer not count, not start meaning that already okay now yes do you get the idea everyone now after that after you install and adjust the threshold, this is the paper. If we fold the paper half, okay. If we fold the paper half like this one, and then we stand the paper on the table. Now, automatically we know the height of the of the paper from the table until the top, right? If you use A4, A4 paper, sometimes it will be 21 centimeter. Uh, 21 centimeter and after that you just put this one just put the paper uh, the pencil above uh, like this put the pencil above that one make sure that uh, in which size do you uh, you fold the you fold the paper yeah if you fold it uh, a half at the length meaning that the width of the paper become the height uh, vice versa uh, so we get the information about the hike right after that how to get the information about the falling time of this pencil yeah start your start your uh, acoustic stop stopwatch everyone uh, stop the acoustic stopwatch start make sure that is, the time is still zero triggered by the environmental noise after that hit the paper hit the paper yes when you hit the paper the sound when you're hitting the paper trigger the the application to start and then when the pencil hitting the table it will trigger to deactivate the application got it yeah in my case zero in my case 0 0.202 look at this one the height of drop, for example, I use the A4, yeah, meaning that 0 0.21 in meter, and my time is 0 0.222. This one, the gravitational acceleration will be 0 0.29. That one, the simple activity, but we can ask the students to do it at home. How to change it? Uh, how to modify it into the into the scientific process and we uh, need students to take the, the data multiple times yeah we can change the height as long as we know the principle of the acoustic stopwatch ah okay simple as that yeah can you get have you get, gotten your data any data everyone <laughs> i will share you the uh, what what the name? The laboratory worksheet yeah that I use in my class. Oh my, what is the control oh, yeah. Okay, did you get a nine point eight? Nine point eight or ten? Google Drive uh, from my computer. 
Okay, this is what this is the look like, yeah. What the laboratory worship like. Oh, sorry. I have to uh, no no no. Okay. Now during the class, I asked the student to record the data multiple times. If you already know the principle, the concept, okay, if you know the concept, you can modify. How? What if the student do not have the paper, sir? Yes, you can use a ruler. You can use a ruler and then put the place the ruler at the edge of the table and then maybe. You can find the other things, yeah, the other things that can produce the sound when we hit it, when we hit it, yeah. And then it hit, it will hit the the, the floor and will produce another sound to deactivate the, the time. Yes, that that is the concept. Okay, yeah, and we can integrate this simple activity during our class. Yeah, you can continue it. Okay, I, okay, I will shift you again. Now, so that uh, from the whole uh, from the whole experiment that I ever did uh, during this pandemic, uh, okay, I compiled it into one kit. Actually, there are two kits. Okay, kit for mechanic and kit for uh, physics of wave. As I mentioned before, some physics require uh, apparatus is factory made. So that why uh, this is the kit that can accommodate and can facilitate the students to 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 do lab from home now in this case okay uh, you can collect your own lab, uh, laboratory from home after that yeah after if you already uh, get the idea get the idea and then combine collect it to be one kit and it it can replace uh two kits factory made kit yeah about the physics of wave. We know that diffraction grating is really, really uh, difficult to find in nature, yeah? Diffraction grating, and sometimes we use the factory made gratings. Yeah? So in this case, I introduce you with a, yeah, with a simple activity, simple apparatus to initiate it. Uh, this kit can cover four or until five experiments. Uh, this one, oh, sorry. Speed of sound. Yeah, speed of sound using a recorder, ruler, and smartphone. Refractive index using a rectangular box, torch from smartphone, a paper, and water. Total internal refraction using a jelly. Yes, protector. And then what is the diffraction grating in a, for the high school? Yeah, yes, let's come. Remember that. Only less come, yeah. It replaced the, uh, it replaced the uh, factory made uh, grating that you can you usually find in the physics laboratory. That laser pointer, okay. Uh, this is a sample of my video, yeah. Uh, you can see this. Kemudian penggaris, kemudian tentu saja laser merah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I. Have Make it fast, make it quick. The second experiment has the first this one investigating the refractive Again, index of mark water mark the shadow with a pencil and measure it with a ruler we mark this as wf my results show four centimeters we have finally reached the end of the experiment we will now observe the results Based on what we did, the length of the tape was 4.7 cm, followed by the length of the shadow when the container was empty, marked WE as 5.7 cm, WF minus by length. 
this makes 5.7 minus by 4.7 divided by 4 minus 4.7. That makes 1 divided by 0 0.7 equals to 1.43. So that is the refractive index of water based on our observation. Yeah, that is a, uh, an example of a simple like from home activity measuring or investigating the refractive index of water. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes what I what uh, why I say that this is more conceptual and we derive the formula to be the simple formula, but the student do not need to know where does the formula come from for uh, not uh, for secondary lower secondary students. Yeah, but the concept that they uh, need to know is the greater the refractive index. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the most uh, it bends in the medium. That is what, what uh, that we want to emphasize. Uh, if we are we are teaching the high school, maybe it is it is will be interesting and will it will be challenging to explain the the derivation of the formula. But it is for the secondary. And the next one is it about critical. And one thing that need to be considered is the thickness of the jelly. In this setup, it is two centimeter to get a better result. Second, okay, sorry, I'm of this better. is that when a ray passes through a parallel side of the block of jelly, it returns to its original direction of travel, although it is shifted to one side. Mm -hmm. it is this is diffraction grating. Diffraction grating. Sorry. Experiment four. I use the. Uh, this is Lyscom in the simple setup at home. This is uh, the process where I found it. When I found it, yeah. And trial section. Trial session. And you can see the result. It's really good. The result will be uh, that one. The distance between the pattern can be measured. Kedua karakteristik yang menarik. Yeah, can be measured by using a ruler, and student can do it at home. As the follow up, okay. As the alternate, uh, this activity uh, post pandemic. Yeah, we are talking about the post pandemic activity. Uh, looking at the result and the effectiveness of the of the activity left from home activities, we can use this as the alternative homework for students. So we can. Uh, have much time to construct the concept, foster the concept in school while they need to do the experiment, conduct the experiment at home. Yeah, so when we when they come into school and then uh, they report their findings, we can uh, we can have much time to uh, to elaborate the concept and to discuss the concept behind it with them. Okay, next. Alat musik. Okay, next. Uh, yeah, you can find you can find the the left from home activity from from my uh, YouTube channel or my scientific journal research portal. Okay, in the research gate you can find uh, you can find uh, my paper there, and then yeah, the national journal, and you can see that type my name there. You can find it. I think it is the end of my presentation, Mr. Edibong, and thank you. Everyone, we get a question and answer session next. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Sakti. It's really, really fruitful to, to listen to your presentation. Indeed. Okay. Anyone have any question? Or, or any question for the, the last two presentation is also welcome. There is no question, Mr. Itivan. Yeah. I doubt the presentation is clear. Yeah. Yes, I think, yes, yes, I guess so. And I, I and when I look at your your work, I see it's a kind of like a, a project based learning as well because mm -hmm. students have to do and develop by themselves at home. 
Yes, you can elaborate. Too. Yeah, and really serve like an individual lead. It's nice. Thank you, thank you. And do you, I'm sure that you will also have the time to share what about their work together, like on the Google Meet or Zoom like that, right? Yes, with, yes. With right, our right. students. With our students, yeah. Mm -hmm. Depends on the platform that we use in our school, yeah. And I really like the, the blank form uh, note. I love this idea because not only the content, but the way to think, to plan, to collect the data, many things along the way to get the content. That yes, nice. yes. So that why during pandemic, I think I also yeah. thankful, okay, thankful to this pandemic because it can ignite our idea, mm -hmm. our idea to, to create the laboratory. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. very interesting and unique. Yeah, and if you and if you see in the chat box, you will see your fan club. There are many <laughs> teachers know know you. Yeah. Yes. Those are my fellow teachers. <laughs> so you have somebody, right, in the teach, teaching areas. I mean, yeah. So that's why uh, I emphasize during this pandemic, the student. Has uh, the student have to able to do scientific process, scientific inquiry, not mm -hmm. only watching the demonstration, but they also need to to be able to drawing the graph, yes. to interpreting the data and everything. Okay, we yes. uh, we cannot miss all of the opportunity. Yeah. Okay, yes. that's what yeah. the big and core idea. Yeah, so, it's clear for like that. Like, I would like to see that the in inductive approach. That's why I asked. Yes. Also, I asked Joanne to give some example or ask her that do you have some inductive approach also like that? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome, everyone. Okay. You can contact me from my email or, Please, okay. or my social media. Oh, yeah. It's only a tip here. You can see my social media, for example, Instagram, because I uh, put, I use my Instagram to be my portfolio, teaching portfolio. Yes, you can see okay. all my activities, laboratory activities in my Instagram. Okay, okay. And uh, all of you guys from three uh, countries, are you okay to share your presentation? Yes. Pardon? Okay, maybe you can put in the chat box right now. Okay. Okay. No, oh, wait a minute. And your background at the first to join the seminar is it your school, Sakti? Uh, so what what kind of seminar? No, no. At and the first that we meet, your background, your school background is is it your school? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my background. Yeah, that yeah. is my, my, my school. Wow, it's nice. Uh, wait a minute. It's a nice, <laughs> I need to activate again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is my school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's my school. Wow. Yeah. Look like a campus. Yeah, like a campus. We, we have a campus, not only a school, but also the campus. Uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, Mr. Itipong, as I mentioned earlier, because I have a strict agenda with the Ministry of Education and I need okay. to, yeah. You can leave. Request your no permission, problem. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And okay. we, we will contact via email. Thank you so much for coming today. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank and you. thank bye. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, sir. Okay. And now on, I would like all of you. To, to do the evaluation form for us to develop uh, uh, the future seminar, okay? So please leave for some two of a few minutes to put it in the Google form on your face now, on your, like, by QR code or by the URL. Thank you.
And once again, I have to thank you for the Dala with Dala Academy team and also uh, Miss Joanne. Thank you so much. Thank you. And all, most of all, the, all participants, thank you so much. And uh, I would like to say that there will be four seminars this year. So please keep contact and we will contact you in, in the future for, for another three seminars. Okay. You, you can put what you would like to see on what you would like to hear next for us. And Ms. Nanyalat and Ms. Lalida, do you have something to say to the participant? Okay. And okay. Lastly, I, I hope you enjoy our uh, seminar and get some benefit or some point for for you to apply in your work, in your job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the very kind word in the chat box also. Thank you. And see you next time. Bye-bye.